what these five things refer to are elements of your proposal. Now, I'm using proposal in this way now. The proposal is an organizing document for the thing you're looking for money for. I think I did that all wrong. But anyways, the proposal is for you, particularly in this exercise, is so that you can organize your thinking around that particular idea, the fourth thing here. Remember, this is where the money's going. This is what's attracting the donor to you to spend the money on the idea. And so all of these elements go into uh, the proposal. Just remember when I was talking, uh, whenever we were talking, in the orbit, and I, I said connecting, moving people from outside the orbit it to acquaintance or friend, uh, to advisor, uh, to advocate, to advisor. Um, that's happening through connections. People connecting, finding out about you, getting to know you. That's got everything to do with item number one here, your character. This is where endorsements exist, is these people are good people. They do good work. Endorsement is who, who knows about your work? Where can, where can we get a trusted uh, connection? Track record has to do with story. People get this one wrong a lot. Story isn't just about emotion or passion or a good tale. Story, in the context that I'm talking about here, has to show how your work has changed something. Keep that in mind. Story has to show how your work has changed something. Otherwise, it's just a nice story. So if it's about... Um, uh, if the story doesn't connect the person to your process, it doesn't really help give flesh to the idea. Remember, proposals, conversations in, a, in an office, if you've got an hour with Tom McCauley to tell him about your work, you're really going to be in outline form for almost the entire hour, aren't you? Okay, we're working in this area. Here's what's going on in this area. We're, uh, we've got this many workers. These are our strategies. This is what we've been doing. And your hour's gone. How does he get flesh onto that outline? How does he begin to understand what does all that really mean? Story. Your stories are in your track record, and they show us how your work has changed something since that's what this money's about, is change. It's about your intervention, about you preaching the gospel where it's not been preached. And what happens when it gets, it, it's preached, what sort of change occurs? Not that there's people in church. What happens because there's people in church? What's changed in the community? Story is, uh, people have a hard time with this one. This also is where reporting becomes so important, is, uh, is finding those stories out at the furthest extensions where the loving acts of what you're doing is, um, is being accomplished. Um, purpose, this is a very difficult one because people are always putting their strategy in purpose. So I'm going to come to this right now, and we're going to do a table exercise around here. There are three questions with a fourth one added, that actually make up the answer to this question, purpose. What's our purpose? The first one, what is God showing me? This is your need. This is that thing that's always in focus when everything else is slightly blurry. I believe that God, there's needs everywhere we look. If we were to just stand up, each individual, and talk about the needs that we pay most attention to, we'd begin to learn about the purpose that God has called you to because he's called, he is showing you the need he wants you to develop an intervention into. 
What's the need he shows me these days? It's the need of leaders to know something about fundraising, to know something about organizational development, to flourish in their calling. I had a hard time defining this at First Fruit. If you had asked me a few years ago before we hired Paul Park to become the executive director to replace me at First Fruit, I would have said I'm about the loving acts of the gospel out in the furthest reaches where the kingdom is expanding. I would have said that's what I'm about. Paul Park observed me for a few months and he said, that's not what you're about at all. That's not what First Fruit's about at all. He said, you're about organizations flourishing in their calling so that they can do the loving acts. And it hit me like a thunderbolt. He was exactly right. I was actually about the organization. In fact, I've been that way since the first day that God called me to work. I was about making sure the rescue mission and everybody in it could do their job. What is God showing me? It's like an old camera. Those, when you used to have to focus the camera yourself, you have to go back and forth. It's that thing that snaps into focus when everything else is blurry. This will be the easiest question of the three that we're going to ask that for you to answer. Because it's in front of you all the time. Because you can't let go of it. You can't walk away from it. You're always faced into that need. The second question is the toughest question to answer. Now remember, we're working on purpose right here. What's he telling me to do about it? This is the toughest question because we always pull our strategy up into this question. The third question that I need to answer is how will I know I'm doing it? How will I know I'm, I'm accomplishing what you've called me to do? The second question is calling. This third one is strategy and outcome. But we're always pulling, well, he's telling me to give them housing. He's telling me to uh, uh, feed them. He's telling me to do all these things. Those are strategies, and they change. Tra strategies change all the time. That's what I was saying about long-term planning. That's why when I answered the question at the rescue mission, the question I answered was, he's made us evangelists to the poor. That was the answer for me at the, uh, at the rescue mission. It took me a long time to get that right. Then the strategies could change. The calling never did. There, because circumstances change. I mean, for example... In the, in the homeless world, the, uh, the out-of-work homeless person who was capable of working but didn't have any work to do or was broken, didn't have a house, was the easiest person to work with. And most rescue missions were set up around this idea of work and, and temporary housing. In the 80s, in the United States, in the late 70s and in the 80s, they started really, oh, uh, closing down the mental institutions. And uh, because of uh, the drugs that had been invented the, to help people with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia and uh, depression, because of all those drugs, they now just gave them a prescription and a, uh, 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 a, an appointment with a mental health clinic and a state disability check and sent them out the door. Within two weeks of them starting to do that in California, the bag lady phenomenon in the United States started. Did not exist before that. These women, if you've ever seen pictures of poverty in the United States, if you haven't traveled there, you see these women pushing shopping carts mounted up with stuff. They're, it's known as the bag ladies. That started the day they started closing the mental institutions. Two weeks later, these people started ending up on our doors. We in the rescue missions were completely unprepared. It just required a whole different set of skills. You couldn't just sit and tell them Jesus loved them and here's a meal and here's, a, here's a, an appointment to get a job. 
is a, this required a level of nuance and sophistication that overwhelmed us. So how will I know I'm doing it is a moving thing based on how the calling is played out in the settings that you're in. Strategies change all the time. This is not an easy question to answer. It may seem easy, it's not, because you're always pulling your strategy up. And here's the problem when you pull your strategy up into your calling. Because remember, I've said it over and over again now, calling is what the donor connects to you with. They connect to your calling, not your strategies for the most part. So it's your purpose that draws them in. Tom said the same thing about McClellan's true at first fruit. It's your purpose that calls them in, and then your idea has to be intriguing in light of your purpose. If you show me your training or your housing ministry or that sort of thing and ask me to infer your purpose, I'm liable to get lost. I'm liable to end up not understanding who you are or what you're actually called to do. And when donors are confused, whether they're Indian, Chinese, American, Pakistani, Ugandan, they're going to say no. And so what I'm trying to do with these three questions is clear up confusion is give you a way of segmenting. I think the answer to these three questions taken together is vision. Three-legged stool. What am I seeing? How good are you at describing your need? You need to be the expert in your need. You need to be able to describe that need in very precise, researched terms. It needs to be something God is showing you not just something you're researching to find something to do, but what's he told you to do? What's he showing you? Get to know that very, very, very well. Be the expert in what you are attempting to do. Track record, purpose, idea, and communion of giving is exactly the same, whether it's a $5 gift or a $5,000 or a $50,000 gift. Very few of us are ever going to get a U.S. Foundation grant. So I'm really not teaching to U.S. Foundations. It's just my direct experience, Tom's direct experience, comes out of the U.S. Foundation idea. These are the elements of the communication you're going to make. When I'm talking about proposal here, what I'm saying is organize yourself before you talk to your friends and acquaintances so that you can give them a clear idea about what you're doing and why you're doing it and what the calling from God is. Whether it's a $5 donation or you're speaking in a small church service or whether you've actually got a, a meeting with a large donor. These elements tell your story. What you're doing with the answer of these three questions, whether you're talking to a neighbor, your favorite aunt, a foundation, or you're trying to recruit somebody to come to work in your team, is you're unpacking why should they be there. And you're seeing, do they see the same things you see? Do they feel and, and are they attracted to the same thing? Like I said, if you're in front of a group of 100 people, maybe only three or four or five are going to be called to your specific purpose. But the better you explain these three things in your purpose statement as vision, the better you're going to be able to attract them, those three, four, or five that he's given you.